now that Greenfoot has successfully installed and you have opened up an empty world in Greenfoot, a new scenario, uh, we need to talk about the different parts of Greenfoot and how to access different things. So to start off, this is your world as they will call it in Greenfoot. It is your environment. It's where you can place your objects in your world, your different characters, um, different background images, enemies firing at different things. All of your actors that are in your game will be located in this world. So in order to access the code for this world, this world has already been created for us. It is the default and it's called my world and it's underneath this overarching world classes. So if you double click and look into the world classes, this will have um, this API show up. Um, and this API allows it so that you can see what sorts of information and what sorts of commands you're able to do. Um, these commands are called methods. We'll go over these a little bit more as we go. But if you want to access anything uh, that has already been preloaded into Greenfoot, uh, they've done a great job in Greenfoot allowing um, creating methods that you makes it a lot easier um, for you to give your objects commands without having to write down every little bit of code, um, such as getting the height of, a, of the world or getting the number of cells. You just have to put in that get height code or get color or get width, remove objects. Instead of physically writing each bit of code, they have pre-created pre uh, methods that are, that are involved uh, in this API. So um, all actors associated with the world can get access to the world object. The size of cells can be specified at world creation time. And it's constant after creation. Simple scenarios may use large cells that entirely contain the representation of objects in a single cell. More elaborate scenario may use smaller cells down to single pixel size to achieve fine grain placement and smoother animation. So um, there are a, a total number of cells, pixel sizes, um, that each cell will be. And so to look at your world, this is the what your documentation, what your back, excuse me, what your background will look like. Um, excuse me, not your background, your code. Um, so this in Java, you have to create a class for whatever program you are running. And this is your my world class, which extends all the, extends the world package, all the information that's in the world that we just looked at will will be able to be accessed through this my world class so this that's what this public class that public means you're allowed to access it from other classes uh, class is the description of what my world is and the fact that it extends world tells you uh, how what sorts of uh, pre-made methods are, are able to be accessed and inherited to my from my world so um, this is called a constructor class. It doesn't have, it's just the name of the class. And this allows you to, to change the, the size, uh, the look of your world. Uh, and this method allows you to um, change things prior to the main method happening. And we'll talk a little bit more about what a main, your main act method is. Um, so you have a size of a world that creates a world that is um, 600 wide by 400 tall. So this is your X value and your Y value. So if you increase this a little bit, if you look at what it was there, 800, 600 by 400 right there. If I made it 800 wide by 600 tall and I compile, meaning I, I organize the code, I compile the code, it will look, oh, my, my screen is a little bit bigger. So that's how you change the size and dimensions of your world. The one is the size of the pixels. So if I change that to 10, it would make my world way 10 times as big because all this 600 and 800 and 600 is saying is how many pixels at whatever size this is are in the world. So this would be 800. 10 by 10 pixels. So right here you see a comment 
which doesn't affect any of the code, but it shows you what this is doing. So 600 by 400 cells with cell size of 10 by 10 pixels. So that's way too big. So the reason that you might want to do this, if I made it 80 by 60, that would end up being the same size if I compiled it. That would be the same size as my previous world code um, was, the 800 by 600. The reason you might want to do this is there's games like a Frogger game or Tetris where you're moving block by block um, or maybe 10 pixels at a time uh, and you want to change how you move, you would change the pixel size of each one of the cells. But I want it to the original 800 by 600. Okay, um, so if I want to set my background, I need to right click and set image. And so I will do it, choose a background image. Um, this is a fine background image. Uh, this will be uh, the look of your environment. Uh, if you choose any of the other ones, they're going to be uh, smaller. And so they would just be different in backgrounds, but the backgrounds are specific so that they match up and they, they're not all squared. Actually, most of them aren't. Um, but it allows you to, to see how these stack on top of each other. You know, and are, it's 800 by 600 in one by one pixels. So if I want to add in actual actors and objects that can move around and, and I, can, I can work with, not just the look of my environment, I would right click and create a new subclass. These are called subclasses of the, of the actor class. And so if I chose a person, um, I would call that player. If I only have one player in my code, you, uh, you want to call the name of the class something that is actually relatable. Because if you have someone that wants to edit your game or help you with your game or you just have a lot of different players or or actors in your game you want it to be as specific as possible so if I want it to be two words I capitalize both your class it's very important that you capitalize each word each start of each word so you want you do not want to lowercase it because that will get you confused later on in your programming you want to make sure that you have very good uh, habits in your programming so that uh, you have capital letters for the name of your classes. So if player is my class, you can hold shift down and add them in manually. This is great about Greenfoot is it's very easy to locate, put them in, and I can right click and save the world. Uh, saving the world allows you to, um, it creates a prepare method and it's what it's a pre-made method is what we, we these are going to be called methods and I'll keep going over those more and more and it's pre-made in Greenfoot where it will design your environment your world for you when you save the world and it will add a player and this is class player and it's a it's going to be called just player with a lowercase p so and it's going to be a new instance. An instance is one single class, one object of class player. So one single one of them. So this is how you create one single new object in your world. And it's this is what you name it, and this is what kind of player it is. This is the this is what kind of actor it is. This is the player actor. Okay, and then you do the, write the code for add object of type new player and it's going to be called player lowercase p and so this lowercase p player is saying that a instance of a new player of class actor player is going to be added at x340 and 255 and this sets if I took this out it's because I moved it before I saved the world. And so originally I had it here, then I moved it over here and I saved the world uh, after I at clicked it in once. Um, that's why it sets the location. So just be aware that Greenfoot will relocate your objects and if you save the world and move it around. You could also manually add this stuff in. 
um, and notice this prepare is in the my world constructor class because we're doing this prior to us running the code prior to us running anything we want this object when we reset it located relocated back to the beginning back to the beginning okay once we push play and run it will start doing certain specific movements okay so when we go into our player code and we want to get a moving we can put add your action code here so when we push act run it will do the act method and it will do it approximately when your speed is right in the middle approximately 60 times per second that's important to know your timing and how you want uh, maybe a count to happen or how you want how many bullets you're shooting or how fast they're moving um, you want to know the speed at which you're doing so I like to leave it in the middle and then manipulate my game from that so um, there is a pre-made move method in Greenfoot uh, that if you put a number in here this will be the speed at which you're moving um, another way you can access some of these methods is doing control space control space will give you a load of different methods that have been pre-made and here is a void method meaning void means that nothing is getting returned to the computer excuse me nothing is getting returned back to you from the computer so we are just telling the computer something we are not expecting it to have um, return anything to us this is touching we'll expect a true or false which is what a boolean is and we'll go over that more later it would expect a true or false to be returned to it so it would expect something like if this is true if you are touching the wall then you will bounce off the wall if you if is touching uh, enemy you lose so this is not expecting anything this is just a simple straight up command and if you put a number in there whatever number you put in that's how much it's going to move forward okay and it'll move two pixels what when we put this code in so if we did the act method once and you look right at this our player and you you can see them moving very slowly you can right click and inspect and it will show all right my x value is 348 if I push the act method once I right click and inspect my x value is now 350 so it's moving to the right which all actors in Greenfoot when you just do move it is moving forward so it is moving to the right um, the reason this is forward is that everything the rotation in Greenfoot to the right is your zero so your rotation so if I right click inspect my rotation is zero now if I was if this was facing down and I moved two and it was and I was facing down my rotation would be 90 then my rotation would be 180 if it was move, looking left it would be turned to the left and actually upside down and it would be looking left if it's looking all, turned all the way up to the top that would be 270 but to the right is zero so act method pushes us forward two pixels at a time once we start making our games we'll be doing run doing the run the simulation so it would run 60 times per second so they'll move it'll move pretty decent speed so it's gonna move about 120 per second since it's two pixels per sec per act method because in our act method we put two and that'll run 60 times per second when we push run so two times 60 is 120 per second and they will move across the screen now let's quickly uh, show you how to do a basic if statement so this is one of the most important things in all of programming you can do a lot uh, in programming just with creating if statements there's a lot simpler uh, this is one of the most simple things you can do there's a lot uh, more complex but better more efficient code for later on but you can do a heck of a lot of stuff with just using if statements so if I want to make it 
if the right key is down, it rotates to the right or clockwise. And if, it, if the left key is down, it turns left or counterclockwise. So if condition, so this is our condition. So this is whatever if the right key, if the space bar, if you run into another object, if you hit the edge of the world, if you do whatever you decide to do, if we're going to do right. So greenfoot.isKey down is the code that will allow us to press a button and greenfoot will read the button um, and our button will be the right key. So if right key is down, um, what I just did naturally, and I need to explain, you do not want a semicolon, which if you've done programming before, you want a semicolon at the end of every command line. Um, so after you give instruction, you want to always end it with a semicolon. But my instruction has not ended with if green foot is key down. This is a question. So if the right key is down, then this will happen. Otherwise, nothing's happening. If the right key isn't down, I could type whatever code I wanted and nothing would happen until I push the right key down. So if the right key is down, we're going to turn to. Now turn will allow us to rotate clockwise at two degrees. And while this is getting held down, it'll turn two degrees 60 times per second. So 120 degrees per second. Uh, because 2 times 60 times per second when we push run. So it should take us about 3 seconds, 120 times 3, to do a full circle. So let's compile and let's test that so it's moving. And then if I hold right key down, 1, 2, 3. And wow, that was pretty perfect. Uh, turned a full 360 degrees. But if the left key is down, nothing's happening so you want to make sure that you write fully write your code and that's a perfect example of how um, you need to have both all your code in there or the computer is going to literally only do exactly what you tell it and what you want it to do okay so this is a simple if statement if I copy this and paste it I don't want to reinvent the wheel, so what do you think? Pause the video now if you're wanting to teach yourself and try to figure out how to turn to the left and turn counterclockwise. If this is turning two degrees down, how would we turn two degrees 60 times per second the other direction? Well, you put left here and add a negative. If you did that, played the video and you did that, then you did that correctly. And now you can turn to the right, and you can turn to the left, and you can move around your screen, and you have a player that is moving around, and you have actually made this object move exactly how you want it to. And that is our first lesson in Greenfoot. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. You learn how to construct a world construct an actor in the world, save the world, uh, as well as a basic command line and your basic if statement. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please join me next time. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Hit that like button. Uh, it'll really help me out. I'm, I'm a high school teacher of four years and I, I'm really just trying to spread my knowledge of the world and I hope you guys uh, continue to join me and spread that knowledge with me. So uh, until next time, thanks.